This is video number two of mistakes for you to avoid on your IB biology exams. I've got another 25 for you, so here we go. So when students were given an extended response question regarding digestion, one of the things that was rarely mentioned were the details about the source substrate products and optimum pH of the different enzymes within the human digestive system. So I've given you a table here to remind you and you need to make sure that you add details if you get an extended response question. So these are the details that need to go in there. Still on the topic of human physiology and when students are asked to describe a feature that adapts alveolar to gas exchange, they're often mentioning thin membrane instead of thin wall. So you have to make sure that you say thin wall as opposed to thin membrane. When comparing different cell types, for example, prokaryote, eukaryote, plant and animal, students are only giving half of the sentence. This is a mistake. You can't leave it to the examiner to complete the sentence. So if you're going to say prokaryotic cells have a nucleoid region, finish the sentence by saying whereas eukaryotic cells have a membrane-bound nucleus. Now with the plant and the animal cells, typically some people have said plant cells have a cellulose cell wall and animal cells have a cell membrane. Well, plant cells have a cell membrane too, so that's not a good comparison. You should say that animal cells do not have a cell wall, and that would complete the comparison. Now, you could be asked to compare, or you could be asked to distinguish. These are two of the IB command words. If you are asked to distinguish, the IB examiner's report specifically saying that students should use the terms whereas, than, or however in their sentences. So, as in the previous example, prokaryotic cells have a nucleoid region, whereas eukaryotic cells have a membrane-bound nucleus. When drawing the structure of DNA, students are misidentifying where the covalent bonds exist. So, they're doing really well with the hydrogen bonds, which are in between the nitrogenous bases, two of them between A and T, and three hydrogen bonds between C and G. But the covalent bonds should be labelled too, between the phosphate group and the deoxyribose, and also the deoxyribose and the nitrogenous base. Continuing on the theme of DNA, whenever you refer to the nitrogenous bases, the examiners actually want you to write out the whole word and not just the letters. So you've got adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine, and make sure that you spell them correctly. So students seem to be familiar with the fact that DNA contains a genetic code this is transcribed onto mRNA, and that's then translated into a sequence of amino acids to form a protein. However, when mentioning genetic modification and talking about genetic engineering, students fail to mention that it's the universality of the DNA. In other words, that it's, that code is interpreted the same way in every organism that allows for genetic modification and genetic engineering to take place. Whenever you're comparing two points on a graph, for example, the temperature at 130,000 years ago and the temperature at 700,000 years ago, you have to use comparative terms. You can't just state that 130,000 years ago it was 4 degrees C temperature anomaly and 700,000 years ago it was minus 2 degrees C. You need to say that 700,000 years ago the temperature anomaly was lower than 130,000 years ago. Use comparative terms such as higher and lower. It's a difference between getting the mark and not getting the mark. Evaluate is one of the most challenging command terms that the IB uses and students often find it difficult. However, sometimes you'll be asked to evaluate a hypothesis. If this is the case, then look at the hypothesis and look at the data. The first thing you should say is whether the data does or does not support the hypothesis or whether it falsifies the hypothesis. You can then complete your answer by giving a justification as to why you made that statement. Make sure when you justify yourself that you refer to the data. There has been evidence in past exams that students didn't know how to design a dichotomous key. It was evident because they were using internal or physiological characteristics to do so. And what you really need to do is use visible external characteristics. So take a look at the pictures and construct your dichotomous key using visible features of the organisms. When drawing food chains, or food webs for that matter, there are two really important things to remember. 
The first is to make sure that your arrows point in the direction of energy flow. They cannot point in both directions, only in the direction of energy flow. The second is to be familiar with the ways in which energy is lost at each trophic level. So energy is lost through cell respiration, through undigested material or feces, and also through the death of organisms. When discussing protein synthesis, particularly in extended answers, make sure you make reference to codons and anticodons, and make sure you get them the right way round. So codon is three nitrogenous bases on mRNA, and an anticodon is three nitrogenous bases on tRNA, or transfer RNA. Now on to natural selection as a mechanism for evolution. So here you have to make sure that you make mention of a favorable heritable characteristic. Use those words and then actually state what the favorable heritable characteristic is in your answer. In statistics, there are two percentages you absolutely have to remember amongst everything else that you're memorizing. You have to memorize that 68% of the data is contained within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean and 95% of the data is contained within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean. When writing the genotypes for blood types, you have to be familiar with the notation that the IB is asking you to use. A mistake in the past is using the incorrect notation. So lowercase i, lowercase i is type O. Type A can either be uppercase I, A and lowercase i, or uppercase I, A, uppercase I, A. Similarly for type B, and for type AB, you have uppercase IA, uppercase IB. In the ecology unit under the section populations, you're asked to draw and label a sigmoid growth curve. Students give all sorts of strange curves for this, but you get no marks whatsoever unless it's actually a sigmoid curve, like so. The best way to go about doing this is to make sure that you practice it. It is a draw and label objective. And now for some specific tips on how to approach papers 1, 2 and 3. Paper 1, the multiple choice paper. One major mistake here is leaving multiple choice answers blank. It is not negatively marked like the SATs, so if you leave them blank it's just throwing away marks. Never leave a multiple choice answer blank. In paper 2, section A, a common mistake is that when students are analysing the data that's provided, they fail to refer to the actual data in their answer. So please make sure you make reference to the data contained within the tables and graphs to support your answer. Be familiar with the command terms, the first word with which the question starts. This tells you in which way they want you to express your understanding. If you don't know the command terms, watch my video Mastering IB Biology Questions in 10 minutes. For example, if you're asked to explain, you have to justify your answer to get full credit. Common mistake in student answers, do not repeat the exam question in your answer. No need for an introduction, just get straight to the point the examiner can read the question. If you repeat it in your answer, you're simply wasting time. When constructing any kind of extended response or approaching a data analysis question, you must make sure that you look at the number of marks available for your answer. It's been commented in past examiner's reports that students need to write more distinct ideas than the number of marks available, and this increases your chances of hitting the marks that are on the mark scheme. The biology papers are e-marked. That means that your answers are scanned to send to the examiners. So make sure that when you're writing your answers, you keep them within the box provided to ensure that none of your answer is lost during scanning. Paper 2, Section B. The instructions will tell you to answer one question, sections A, B and C. So if, for example, you've got question 5, 6 and 7, you're going to pick one of them and do A, B and C from that one. You can't do 5A, 6B and 7C. That's a major mistake that some students make. There's also marks available for construction of your answer. There's normally a common theme between A, B and C. So even though you're going to address them separately, if you can reflect the theme throughout, then you're going to get marks for the quality of construction of your answer. On to paper three. When you get to paper three, please make sure that you only answer the options that you've studied in class. 
Don't answer another one just because it sounds familiar. For example, there is an option on ecology and there's a core on ecology. Sometimes students answer the option even though they haven't studied it. Big mistake. Please only answer the two options that you have studied. Remember that they're dependent on the core syllabus, so you have to go and review the connections with the core syllabus.